guys, I'm Rich from NeoWin. Today we're taking a look at Windows 10 build 17063. So this came out today and it's the first build that we've seen in about a month. So if we if you go to the Windows blog and you take a look at the change log, or if you go where you should go, which is NeoWin, you'll see that um it's a massive uh change log. According to Donna Sarkar, it's about 35 pages long, and um that's just insane. So uh you know, you could, uh, we have the whole thing posted. It's it's right here, if it loads. But, um, yeah, so there's just a ton of stuff. Obviously, I can't get to all of it, but there is some cool stuff that uh, that I want to show you. And um, so let's take a look, right? So we have a uh, um, timeline. So that's, like, the hottest feature. I don't think it's the, the most impressive feature here, but it's, like, the hottest feature. So obviously the task view icon has changed. This takes over task view. Uh, but it still says test view on it. So here we go. So these are this is stuff that I was previously looking at earlier today, December 12th. Um, this stuff does carry over from other PCs, obviously, because, I mean, I wasn't running this build on December 12th anywhere. Um, I haven't used this PC in probably about a month. So it, this goes back to November 28th. It should go back 30 days, and you can't uh, configure that at all. So, um, I, I mean, for the time being. You can remove stuff if you want, right? That's gone. Um, so we can see I was on the Windows blog, checking out the change log. And you can see that we have some new um, Fluent Design elements in Edge. In fact, there's new Fluent Design elements all over the OS, which is really kind of interesting. So starting with Edge right here, uh, but we have an entirely new settings UI, right? So what we can see here is that we have the Fluent Design, which we had in the Flow Creators update, but there's some new elements to it. So you can see that that um, there's an area that's kind of highlighted beyond it. So if you're not familiar with Fluent Design, there's uh, there's different things. Like with Edge, we saw this is acrylic right here with the transparency, the blur effect all across the top there. That's called acrylic. There's Reveal. So... All these buttons on the settings menu don't have their own outline. So when you hover over it, it makes an outline. As you get closer to another button, that will start to light up. But what's new here is the the highlight in the back. And obviously an all new design overall. All right. And then we have the acrylic when we go into the menus here. Um, some lines under Windows Update. A lot of this is very different. You can see up here there's a home button instead of the gears icon. All right? Big design changes. So remember when they first talked about Fluent Design, they said that it's going to roll out in phases. So I honestly don't think they, they know exactly what they want to do for the final phase. I think this is just how it evolves over time. And the idea is that it works in 2D and three-dimensional. So if, if you have the settings menu open in Windows Mixed Reality, for example, um, you can see more easily what you're looking at. Another thing that's new in this build, not for everybody and not for me, but I am going to talk about it, is sets. So um, I, I've been told that if you have sets, you'll see a, a plus icon on the Microsoft Store or in Mail. I don't have it, so I, I can't demo it. But the idea is that you can put different apps into different tabs and basically you can run the shell like you would a browser. So see like a plus sign like that kind of. And I think that's really cool. Stardock makes, by the way, uh, Neowin is partially owned by Stardock, but um, full disclosure. But uh, Stardock makes a utility now called Groupie, where um, sets should only work with UWP apps, but uh, Groupie works with everything. It works on Windows 7, 8.1, and 10, and uh, I've been using it since it came out uh, last week. It's pretty cool. But uh, for now, I mean, if you want to try out sets, uh, take your chances by installing the build. I've been asking around trying to find out if that relates to your Microsoft account or the, de or the device. Like, for example, if I install this build on a dozen PCs, will I, will, will I be more likely to get sets or is it just linked to my Microsoft account? Like, my Microsoft account doesn't get it, it doesn't get it, that's it, you know. Um, there's Cortana improvements. The notebook has a new look. As you can see, this is all new. Uh, there's a tab design. Obviously, tabs are, are kind of what they're going for here, I think. Um, it's worked in browsers for so long, it really makes sense to do this to the rest of the UI. So, um, manage your skills, music providers, connected home, home accounts. So, um, 
Yeah, this is where all the uh, notebook stuff goes now. Collections have been merged with lists. Uh, I don't really use either of these <laughs> these features, but uh, we can see that that that's how that works. I'm maybe I could use this stuff. It looks it looks uh, interesting enough. Um, there's some new Cortana stuff where you can say play uh, play Christmas music on Spotify. So play Christmas music on Spotify. No, nope, didn't hear that. Play Christmas. Play Christmas. Oh, this is not happening. Okay, so um, I wasn't able to actually um, use the voice command. I ran the troubleshooter. It did not work. Uh, but yeah, that that should work. I'm not going to go and install Spotify on this thing. But uh, yeah, so you can say things like play Christmas music on Spotify, play my D uh, Discover Weekly playlist on Spotify, uh, play some Drake, play focus music, play rock music, play my tracks. Or you could say, hey, music, uh, uh, hey Cortana, what's playing? Um, so, so that's just some... Uh, you know, new music focused features. So, um, there's my people improvements. I'm not a big user of my people. Uh, you can drag and drop your icons to kind of rearrange them. You can change how many, uh, show up in the task bar and the fly out should have more, uh, fluent design as well. Honestly, I don't use it. I don't even see what's different because I'm not a, my people user. Uh, so, you can see that if we go back into settings, you can see if we go to um, settings, personalization, taskbar. Um, where is personalization? Right there, taskbar. And then we can we can set that stuff up there. And, you know, I'm just going to put one because I, I don't even... Right, and you can drag and drop this stuff. So so see now Rich Hayes shows up here and I, and you can apparently drag and drop these. I can't, you know... I, I'm not going to even try, but, um, yeah. So back to, by the way, there, there are more, uh, settings improvements. Cause there, there's a lot that's different. There's a big part of the blog post that focuses on that. Um, you could set up security questions for local accounts. Obviously I don't use a local account. I use a Microsoft account. Uh, you could view your display info in one convenient location, beginning with build 17060, which was never released to the public. So, uh, yeah, so if we go, go to settings, uh, system display, we can go to advanced display settings and, uh, you can kind of see all the, the display info in one convenient location. But if we go to advanced scaling settings here, so there's a new setting here, let windows try to fix apps. So they're not blurry. So I haven't tried this out. I haven't had the opportunity to yet, but if you, I mean, we've seen this with Win30, a lot of Win32 apps where they just kind of come up and they look blurry. And so you'll see a pop up and it'll say fix apps that are blurry and you say, yes, fix. And it might work. I, I haven't had a chance to try it, but that that is uh, pretty cool. Um, so if we go to um, the, there's new keyboard settings, if we go to time and language. So it says that you can you can easily uh, add new keyboard layouts, switch between Japanese 106/109 and English 101/102 keyboard layouts, turn on and off settings like key sounds and autocorrect, and other advanced keyboard related settings. So um, yeah, that's pretty new, I guess. Uh, a new and improved region and language settings pane. Um, so as part of our ongoing effort to convert settings and control panel, as well as improve settings usability, you'll find that with today's build that we have reimagined the region and language settings. We've added icons to each language, um, and so on. Uh, I mean, really, I mean, there's a lot of this stuff that I'm just not familiar with by nature because I don't, um, I don't go to these settings a lot, um. You, I mean, you, uh, there's a new settings page for data settings and cellular settings. Like, and I don't even have cellular settings. There's not a lot of cellular PCs out. You know, I mean, I can check. It shouldn't be there, but yeah, it w it would show up over here. But obviously, I don't have uh, cellular. This is a this is an HP Spectre X360 that I'm using right now. Okay. Um, so yeah, we've got some other features. Uh, Windows subsystem for Linux stuff. Uh, new tools for developers, uh, control Windows legacy apps, access to your camera, uh, input improvements, personalize the handwriting panel. Um, you can go to change the font on the handwriting experience. If we go to uh, settings, devices, uh, 
Windows Pen and Windows Ink. And so, we yeah, we can change these to three different fonts. Okay, so it would be nice to have, you know, little Comic Sans, you know, everybody, it's everybody's fam fa favorite font. The Emoji Search is now available in 190 uh, regions. So 152 of which have tooltip support when you hover over each emoji. Uh, you know, it says you can now use the emoji panel in more languages. To me, this this seems like, and that's, you hit Windows 1, and uh, that should come up in any uh, taskbar. I mean, any text box. Okay, so we're in tablet mode here, and um, we can see that we have a, a split-screen keyboard if you want to use it. And with this, this just allows you to type with two hands, which to me makes a lot of sense for a tablet, because there's really no easy way to do that. I mean, when you're holding a tablet, especially in landscape mode, it um, it just it's there's no really easy way to type on the touchscreen, so this this makes a lot of sense to me, and uh, I think that's pretty cool. So they've also made some changes for the uh, emoji panel, which is um, if we go into the the back into the keyboard settings, we can see that um, you can choose not to close the emoji panel after um, after an emoji has been entered. So if we go into any any text box we could hit win period and we get this emoji panel now and we can now type in all the emojis we want <laughs> before we close it so um that feature was actually added in the last build and what was added now is the ability to choose between whether you want it to close right away or not okay and um so yeah we got a bunch of stuff in this build man uh IT pros uh, for deliver new features for IT pros and delivery optimization, registry process, um, lots of stuff. There's some known issues that you're going to want to be aware of because there's a lot of stuff in this build. You're going to be tempted to install it. So um, you you definitely should be aware of the known issues <laughs> before you do. Uh, some games like League of Legends and NBA 2K Online uh, will cause 64-bit PCs to bug check. That's... Um, if you like those games, you're going to want to be aware. We can scroll down to the known issues here. Uh, so that's a GS. So that's a green screen of death, which is what insiders get instead of a, a blue screen of death. Jeez, I hate that message. All right. Um, moving on, we have uh, uh, issues with 360 degree videos on the movies and TV app within mixed reality uh, will result in the video facing the wrong way. Um, Edge won't receive push notifications from websites. So, yeah, there, there's just a bunch of stuff here. And like I said, it's just best to be aware of it before installing. Just kind of know what you're getting into. Um, I've heard that some people have had trouble installing this build. I have not. Um, I've installed this on three PCs so far, and, and it's installed fine on all of them. So there's that. And, uh, guys, that's it. That's, that's really all I can talk about. This video has, has been long enough. Um, I'm Rich from Neowin. Have a great night.